Hey guys, welcome back to the Chatelet Strength Shed. Back training in here today. Um, horrible weather outside. I'm getting back into push pressing. Haven't done any push pressing in a long time. Uh, since I, I tore the Achilles, I've really struggled with that triple extension that you need for these type of explosive overhead movements. So first session back today, and I'm incorporating the bands. Band, band pressing, or using, doing the push press with bands is something that really helped me early on in my career. So decided to put them into my training program again. Um, so I've got the Cerberus bands, I'm quite lucky, I've got a load of different resistances. If you're doing this yourself, you don't want to use too much resistance. We're looking at something like 15 to a maximum of 25 kilos at lockout. And people always ask, you know, how much the bands add. To be quite honest, it's going to vary on individual to individual, depending on how high you're pressing, how much resistance is in that band. But the, the one bit of advice I'd say is just use the same setup weekly. So this will be my setup. I'll use the same bands each time I do it, and that way I'll be able to track the progress. Um, like I said, it's, you know, the people work out what it's meant to be. To be quite honest, it's irrelevant. As long as you can track your own progress using the same setup, if it's getting better each week, you know you're progressing. So you've got the typical crappy flexibility of most bigger strongmen. Um, ideally, if you can get that bar resting on your clavicle, you're gonna get a lot more power out of your legs. What I try and do is really squeeze my biceps and my forearms together so I still have some kind of tension and connection when I do press, but um, I don't have the flexibility to get the bar on the, on the actual clavicle. Got my new um, Cerberus shorts on today. <laughs> Keep the legs nice and warm. It's terrible weather today, isn't it? So uh, what rep range are you going for on push press today? Um, I'm probably gonna start with fives, and uh, maybe work up to a triple, and then I'm gonna take the bands off and see how it feels once the bands come off. I like to work up to a heavier weight, and then drop back and do reps. Um, works quite well, your body kind of is expecting that heavier weight on the bar, and then suddenly those first few reps feel a lot easier than just doing a set of reps beforehand. H.E. is training arms today. It's He's fun. all about the guns. Yeah. <laughs> Every day is arm day? Every day is arm day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, H. Thought I'd get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get out of it. The, these bands are a little bit more. I would say they look like between a red and a black of the typical one yeah, here, so so. I, I think last time I'm probably using Looks it. like sort of a between one of those to me. I said earlier, I mean, people always ask how much they add, and you see people on like Instagram and stuff like that claiming the bands are adding ridiculous amount of weight. It's, it's, it's like I said, 20 kilos at top is, is, is enough. It's just that little bit of overload to create that. We're still focusing on speed, so trying to move the bar fast, that's, that's the main goal. Um, we're not trying to, what you don't want is, the difference in terms of bar weight and bands to be so huge because then when you just take the bands off it'll just feel completely weird you still want a good amount of weight on the bar um, so if I was using say the green bands that we've got over there that add a lot of tension you're not going to have too, too much tension at the bottom but as soon as that bar goes over your head it could add so much more weight that it's almost irrelevant It feels better. I, was, I, I tried to do some push pressing a few months back and it was really just not working. Is I was, it the Achilles? Yeah, it, it's like, the only way I can explain it, it doesn't hurt, there's no pain in my Achilles at all. It's just like my foot doesn't work properly. Uh, I've got ages till the competition that I've put myself into has actually been postponed now, pushed back to July, I think. They, it was supposed to be April, it's been pushed back to July. So I'm not worried about big weights right now. We're just trying to lay the foundations and improve the function of the Achilles, because that's going to be the big thing for me. You know, I was talking to Hixie the other day, and talking about kind of coming back. And if I can't get good at the moving events, then it's kind of pointless me coming back, because they're the events that I was really good at. You know, I'm strong, but I'm not known as like a static monster. I'm a bit more athletic, and 
the, the speed events and stuff like that are where I need to be excelling. So if I can't get my foot functioning how I want it to, coming back is kind of pointless because I'm just going to be giving away so much on the events that I was good at. Um, so I'm hoping the things that we're doing, some of the stuff we'll show you later will definitely help. But um, anyway, let me put some more weight on and stop resting. How heavy do you think you'll go today? Around 110, 120. Okay. See how it feels. My pressing is very, very down right now. Mm. I did, um, I haven't really done any log to be honest, but I did the qualifier for the um, Englands. I did 130 for five. And 100. Yes, please. One thirty to five though, how many training sessions did you um, put in before? Uh, that was my second training session. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so you haven't been working on it then? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I'd seen a few comments saying I'm surprised at Loz's numbers being so low. Um, <laughs> I literally did two, two farmer's walk sessions and um, I didn't really do any deadlift sessions as such. I just, I'd been doing some reps with sort of 250 and then um, just tried to see what I could pull and pulled pulled 800 pounds 363 kilos um miles away from my best but it wasn't easy by any means but you know i'm i, I know with four or five months training i can get i'd like to at least be able to pull 410 by then i think if i can pull 410 again that's a you know it's a nice number um still not back to my best but getting back to your best is extremely hard with um you know things that I've, I've, I've gone through um, but 410 is still competitive certainly at that level um, but like I said it's the moving events I'm more concerned about they're the things that if I can't get good at them I've sort of said if I can't win it I don't deserve to go up against the, the better guys um, and that's nothing that's not to take anything away from the guys that qualify to do this comp I've seen some good names that have entered you know there's guys above me on the list but when you compare my best numbers ever, yeah. I would be so far above everyone else, you know. But obviously, injuries and father time sort of catches up with you a bit. So it's, it's, it's just a bit of a fun experiment. I'm not putting the pressure on myself, but it, it, you know, I will, like, if I can't win, then I don't deserve to go against the better, the better guys. So it is just that test against myself, something to keep me focused. Um, and just, I like training for things. I like challenging myself. Um, nice to have a goal yeah despite you trying to show me those injuries the other i didn't I, no <laughs> we've been talking for ages about doing yeah. um injury video. <laughs> i want to clear my name here this is nothing to do with me not supporting lot <laughs> you know it's kind of funny you see some of the comments and people are oh, have you ever finished a competition i've been on the podium and over like 25 yeah. international a shows couple of hundred. So, um, <laughs> probably 15 to 20 you didn't finish and a couple of hundred that you uh, the, did <laughs> The thing with the injuries with me was that the majority of them were at World's Strongest Man. Yeah. And it's just the nature of the competition. Um, it's what people remember as well. So. Of course. Don't take but it personally. I, I don't. I've just like I didn't take it personally when you accused me of not supporting you. <laughs> you do support me. That's I know. Good. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm probably um, about to curse myself, but it's very rare I've had any injuries in the gym. <laughs> oh Christ, don't say that. We're in the gym. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously when, when you go to a competition, you're pushing yourself to such extreme levels. And that's a, the, the, probably one of the tough things with Strongman is you can't control the numbers you go to. In powerlifting, you can pick a number. In Strongman, the weights are set at a certain number. So it, it's, it's a bit tougher in that respect. But you can't worry about it. You know, if, you, if, if you're worrying about getting injured, you're not focusing on, on getting better. And you're never going to beat the top guys. Literally, other than maybe one or two guys, like someone like Thor hasn't suffered with too many injuries. He's been very lucky, but he's got such a big frame, big powerful frame. 
it's the smaller guys in general, we tend to get more injuries. I'm calling myself small, which is ridiculous, but in strongman purposes, we are. But you look at Kiliashkovsky, that guy's had a lot of injuries. An exceptional athlete, but he's had a lot of injuries. And, you know, even Lissis, he's, and Lissis is someone that's meticulous with technique. He's got great rehab work and he still gets a lot of injuries. Shivlikov as well. Shivlikov is just ridiculous. He doesn't, the injuries don't stop him. That's the only thing. <laughs> um, but it's just a tough sport, but you can't worry about it. You've got to keep training hard and, you know, do what you can to prevent it. But it is what it is. Hundred kilos plus the bands. Three hundred kilos. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, with the bands, at least. How often do you train arms, H? Despite what Lawrence said, once a week. <laughs> she knows. Half day, every day. We did chest the other day, <laughs> legs the other day. Yeah. Doing now, hey? I am doing a dumbbell tricep extension, which you've just caught the last set of points. It looks like I've done two reps, but I haven't. <laughs> yeah. Sit <it>, this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're getting. <laughs> it's not my little clips. They're good, Cerberus clips. They're good. Thank you. So we're going to do one more set with the bands, and then I'll take the bands off and do a set. Hopefully, it will feel a lot easier. <laughs> That's the thinking behind it. shouldn't have gone that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you seeing stars? No, just um, my line was off. Mm. Still finding that it's timing is just off. But um, glad to be handling the weight. You know, it's, it's weird when you when you think back to what you could do at your best. But sometimes you can't think like that. No, you can't let that just start you. from. Actually, that's one thing I've learned getting injured. You can't really worry about what you did before. You've got to build up slowly. Um, it's hard because <laughs> you always think what you're capable of at one time, but it's all good. 120 with the bands isn't bad. So we'll take the bands off, try a set with that. Hopefully it feels a lot easier. <laughs> Product placement, what is this? <laughs> If you want any Cerberus products, use the code WARRIOR. You can put my new shorts on. A little bit big, actually. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Might have to get a smaller pair. Hmm. Legs Good to know that they go that big. Yeah, legs are shrinking. I don't think they are. I don't know. <laughs> you get that in your head, you're sort of like... Your legs oh. haven't shrunk, trust me. Your yeah. legs are still like... No, no. <laughs> We need something for scale, yeah. like a banana or something. Put it on your leg. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere, can I? <laughs> Sometimes you've got to turn up and just get training done. You don't need to get all crazy every single time. But save the crazy for when it really counts. Like hitting yourself with a stick. Man, I did some weird shit, didn't I, when I was yeah. younger? Slapped yourself around the face with a strap, <laughs> hit yourself with a stick. There's, um, there was a really good video, I think Colin Bryce put it out, of um, 2014, you're pacing before doing the deadlift, yeah. and you're growling, like you, you're like an animal just about <laughs> to be let out of its cage. You won the deadlift though. I did, first person to beat Mark Felix in yes. the deadlift at Worlds. And you beat Zadrinus. Yeah. Prime Zadrinus. Yeah. He won that year, didn't he? He did, 2014, that was his last win. <laughs> Right. Oh fuck, that was easy. 
<laughs> that first one kind of caught me out, it was so easy. That was nice. It's what I like about the bands. It makes me feel better about how the set before felt with the bands. Because other than a bit of stability issue, because it went up so easily that first one, that felt really light. It's good. For someone like me as well, who I do have a lot of leg power, it's the lockout that I need work on. So this type of training has always helped me in the past. Um, I'm gonna do four weeks of this and see how my pressing is towards the end of it. But very happy with that. I mean, it's only 120 kilos, you know, let's not get too excited, but <laughs> it was um, a good place to be in for- A nice first starting time. point. Yeah. Last set. Be happy always always finding faults and things that i can improve on um but first session on push press i'm very happy with that the hell are you doing now h i don't know i call this an army curl an army curl so i'm doing it in pump and iron and it worked for him so i thought i would give it a go <laughs> it worked for yeah pretty good arms yeah <laughs> it's got to it be something for it's good for everyone <laughs> <laughs> Second part of the training today, we're doing some footwork drills with the ladder. Really popular with sort of American football players, anyone that needs agility. I've done stuff like this in the past, it was really good for strongman where you need that foot, uh, fast footwork. Um, right now, I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so, okay, so should we say why well, we're doing it mainly for your rehab? Okay? Yeah, I'm trying to get my Achilles kind of, yeah. my foot working. You're just trying to rehab it, get it used to moving again, getting used to working. And anyone rehabbing Achilles, first of all, how long has it been since you've hurt your Achilles? So if you've just torn your Achilles, you don't want to be doing this straight no, away. Uh, it's been over a year and a half. It's a year and a half. half yeah. since. And yeah. overall, you don't notice it too much day-to-day -to -day life. You notice it a little bit, you say, when you go into extension of your ankles. Walking around and stuff like that, I, find I, I do have a slight limp these days, I think. I um, don't know if that's just subconsciously trying to protect it or not. Um, unfortunately, I was getting a lot of physio for my Achilles when the initial first lockdown happened and then all my physio got cancelled. So for a couple of months I was a bit lazy with it, didn't do stuff now that I'm decided to compete again. I think when I decided, you know, when I was retired and it was, you know, I just thought, ah, sorry, it doesn't matter. Now I need to get it functioning a lot better. So Harry's got me doing some useful drills. Um, you guys will probably laugh. At me doing this but the, the idea is that I progress and get better yeah and course. you realize now because you've decided to accomplish you need to get it working yeah. day-to-day -day life you'd be all right but if you're gonna do things like truck pull farmers yeah. walks even stones push presses where you're coming yeah, up it affects that. everything and we've, we've noticed on one leg it's not quite the same as the other there's a definite difference so you yeah. know it's something you need to strengthen and um, it doesn't hurt it's no, just it not hurt. as strong is it yeah. at the moment yeah. so you're in a right place now probably to start rehabbing it and trying to strengthen it so We've done some agility work, or we're going to do some agility work, and you're all going to do some sort of calf work and some soleus work and try and strengthen the area as well. So, calf raises, standing, seated, things like that. That's what your rehabs are yeah, yeah, looking yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to start off with singles, just where we go through each one. So, we're on the balls of our feet, heels don't touch the floor, and then work our way through. So, just getting Lawrence used to being on the balls of his feet. Okay, so we'll go through that once more. So single, so arms moving with it, knees up, bounce on the balls of your feet. Okay, now we're going to go both feet in each square, okay, so a bit of a faster movement. Nice and light on your feet. <laughs> She's laughing already. Okay, so we're going to go to a caterpillar drill now, so both feet in, both feet out. Okay, 
I bet you got some moves on the dance floor, Paige. Yeah, Blimey. Right, yeah. <laughs> The other thing about this, you'll notice it actually gets your heart rate up quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, you can almost use it it's as conditioning. Um, if it's purely speed based and you're like an athlete, I'd get your breath back because you're trying to get faster at it. But if you just want some general conditioning, well, especially in lockdown where you know you can put this in your garden, it's quite a useful little tool. Yeah. If you did this with some skipping, it's quite a good little workout. Right in, left in, right out, left out. Left in. This is much more awkward for me this way. Forward, we're going to go behind to the side and front. <laughs> that's actually pretty very nice. graceful, yeah, I yeah. say. Very good. 160 kilo man, I wouldn't say that's too bad. This will probably be the biggest test for us now. We're just going to do a single leg hop. So <coughs> we'll start with a good right leg. Yeah. Okay, so just going through. We can see how this compares now mm. to his left. That's a little bit flatter. Yeah. On that side. That's better than it was though. Oh, way so better. You wouldn't have been able to do that at all. Yeah, way better. Mm. Well, it was kind of hard to start just to sort of bounce. Yeah. Yeah. On one leg. It was first week I did these. I was literally completely flat footed. Yeah. yeah. So, and that also shows you can do it. So, you need to do it. It's got better. Hasn't caused any further pain. It's just making yourself do things like I'm not the best in the world at this stuff, and I know, kind of look a bit like an idiot. But it's doing it for a purpose, and it's fun. I mean, I'm getting a, you know, breath out of breath, getting some cardio with it. But it's good functional work to strengthen the Achilles without overloading with ridiculous weights. Yeah. You know, a lot of strongman is about moving. Just being quick between implements is something I see a lot of people make mistakes yeah, with. Yeah, you can pick up pressure seconds yeah. or something like a medley. Just a transition between two bits of kit. You know, it makes a, a big difference. So just being able to load something quickly, get off and yeah. you know, sprint back. These are things that, in terms of being a good overall, overall strongman, do make a difference.
You know, strong man, you need to be fit for 60 to 75 seconds. You don't need to be able to run a marathon. So, just going through like we did at the end there, quickly. Ideal, and feel good. Got a sweat on. Pretty happy with today's session, nothing crazy. A bit short on time, so I couldn't do some assistance work that I might normally do. But overall, happy with how it went. Say bye bye. <laughs> bye bye guys, hope you enjoyed it. See you guys, bye. While you're here guys, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so you don't miss any of my awesome strength content.